The easiest way to draw a realistic face is by measuring and comparing from your photo reference. The way we're gonna do that in this video is by using plumb lines and comparing angles and really just breaking down how to observe a face to then draw. We're gonna start with a portrait of my girlfriend and go really slow to really break things down. You can see my setup right now. I got the iPad directly in front of me with my reference and this will be good so I could measure. So to start, I wanna find the top and the bottom of the head. It doesn't really matter. Everything's gonna be based on this. So we'll call this the top and this the bottom. It's pretty arbitrary, but that's a good size. The top of the head, we're disregarding sort of the bun and the bottom of the chin. So we have this distance. That's sort of the distance we're delineating and we're gonna draw a line just so we can sort of visualize this better. Now, we wanna find the widest point of the head and compare these two. If this is the tallest distance to the top, what is this exact to the width? So we do this by measuring. I'm just looking straight down with a straight line at my reference and what it looks like the top of the head to the chin compared to the most left side of the hair, kind of splitting right between the eyes. It's almost exactly this wide, just a little less. And you could do this again while measuring and it's just a little less. So we'll call that the edge right there. Now, again, these measurements are just guesstimations right now. This is all strategy to guess the best proportions. Once things are down, we reorganize, but this is a good solid start. We could see on the most right side, this angle. I like to look at angles. And if we measure this from her widest point, it's sort of just like a straight line. You know, it's it's kind of angled like that. So we can we could just say this is correct for the most right side. If this is the tallest point, again, we could measure. There's an angle sort of coming like, like this. And measuring even more, we're looking for just other angles around and we're guesstimating sort of like this. And I'm exaggerating this obviously to show what I'm doing here. We can kind of just guess the hairline right here, that distance. And I'm also just gonna guess this just to put that in fairly confident you could kind of make out this polygon shape right here what that might look like and now that we have the sort of whole envelope in so to speak we can kind of place that bun um, this is you know very messy and I'm doing this extra slow but you can see sort of now we have an envelope and what I'm gonna do is sort of erase some of these lines just so I can clean it up a little now that we have sort of uh, what we would call our envelope you know this is by no means accurate still, but we can kind of assume a lot of these angles and solidify them uh, just a tad bit to make it more, you know, to make it easier to understand. So we have an envelope, I cleaned it up. You know, this is just what we did measuring. I'm exaggerating this obviously to show the steps, but we're talking about comparison. We're comparing lines. We're comparing the width, the ratio of the height versus the width of the head. And now we're using straight lines and angles. Now we're gonna use plumb lines. Plumb lines, you know, drawing straight horizontal or vertical lines on the face. And you can see where everything lines up. And we're using our envelope as if it's the truth and as if it's right. So we could say that the bottom of the ear sort of goes right below the bottom of the nose. So we could say that the nose is probably somewhere right here. Also the top of the ear sort of lines up with the, the eyelid. So the eyelid is probably somewhere right here. And also within our envelope, I like to use these angles as a point of reference. So this angle right here, uh, the point, it intersects where is this plumb line. We can kind of see that it's almost at the bottom of the lips. So we can maybe say that the bottom of the lip is somewhere right there. Those are two horizontal plumb lines. Let's do some vertical ones. I like this corner of the chin, this angle. We could say, where does it line up? If we draw a straight line like this from this corner, it seems, it seems that it intersects sort of the corner of the eye. Um, we could also tell from this line that the corner of the nose is a little left of it. So we can sort of say maybe it's like right there but it also lines up with the corner of the mouth. I could tell that the nose and ear uh, are a little skewed, so I can move this up a lot. So from here on out, it's just constantly checking myself with more plumb lines, moving things around slightly. You saw I didn't nail things first try, but we could slowly achieve a likeness by just constantly checking ourselves. And I'm shading to give it some more form, obviously, and to find a likeness, but this video isn't super about shading. You can see where I'm going. We don't need to shade it in here, really. Uh, it's more about finding the proportions 
and it's basically one big game of comparing. You know, I wasn't accurate with all of the features, but I did my best with what I thought was correct, and then from those elements and using comparison, I'm comparing using plumb lines, I'm slowly getting closer and chiseling um, just by checking myself through comparison, and that is sort of a way to do it. So let's do another one. We got Mr. Shalama on the iPad. He's got a nice tilt, three quarter view, gorgeous, honestly, photo to draw. We're gonna also time it just so you guys can see sort of um, how long maybe this would take um, while I go at my own speed. We're going about this portrait a bit faster, but as you get more practice, you could start using all the techniques in the first portrait we did and start sort of analyzing them all at the same time to inform your decisions instead of having to go through that long envelope phase. You know, you could really sort of find the first angle of the face, how wide the head is. Timothy has a very square head, you know, in terms of its ratios. Um, and then you just, you know, start plumb lining and seeing where the eye lines up to the bottom of the nose. These things can all come in unison and you could do all of that constantly. And that's sort of the idea of getting better is seeing all of these different ratios and proportions and being able to translate it on your piece of paper faster uh, without checking yourself. Now I still have to check myself obviously, but it's the idea of doing it all at once. And again, the reference is the truth. So you're always referring back to the reference. Feeling good, but I don't think I got the, uh, the angle right. It was too straight here. So I'm pushing this over, which means I have to sort of angle this like that the the face these features look good but i feel like i just have to the corner of the jaw is just a little off i could already tell this is better damn my camera died, the worst thing to happen while recording. You could see, I think it was 28 minutes at the end. All you really miss is the shading, which this video isn't really about, but you know, I think Timothy looks pretty decent, maybe a bit feminine compared to the reference, but overall decent sketch. On to the next one, to Zendaya. All right, so for Zendaya, very square face. Her and Timothy have very square faces. Here we go. I think a good tip is before you even hit pencil to paper is to look at your reference and sort of do some visual archaeology to really find out and observe things about the head that can help you with the techniques moving forward. For example, how tall the head is versus how wide it is, using plumb lines before even drawing to just measure out, okay, the nose does line up with the ear or you know the corner of her chin and the angle of that chin lines up with this part of the hair you could do all of this sort of informational homework beforehand so that when you're drawing that inner dialogue is sort of guiding you and you could problem solve and find those proportions easier because you know what to look for already and obviously you're still referring to the reference but it's important to sort of do that homework during but it's good to do it also before i think we're doing good here. Wow, she is just gorgeous, ain't she? A few of these angles are off. Again, I'm always looking for angles. That's sort of the most important thing after sort of mediumly measuring. I think I could come closer here to this lip. This distance is shorter and also this just, this angle kind of looks off. She might, her face might be a tad bit short. We'll see when we overlay it, but um, I think that could help if I just erase it. I mean, it looks pretty good, to be honest. These are just 30 minute sketches, so we're not doing like a three hour portrait or anything. And we could sort of call it how it is. Again, also I am, uh, this is angled. And so sometimes the camera might look different um, on here. Cause it's like, you know, it's angled a little. So this angle does skew the face a little. It looks like her chin and face is too small, but when I bring it up to level with the camera, perfectly perpendicular, it looks a bit longer and more correct. So I should have mentioned that before, but that's for sort of all the drawings. That's why at the end I show this sort of fade in, fade out what the face actually looks like on the reference because my camera angle at the paper is just a little skewed. Let's draw a Harkonnen. Mr. Dave Batista. Top of the head, bottom of the head. 
And as I'm drawing Mr. Dave Batista here, I need to talk to you about Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. Squarespace is the best website to build a website. It's an invaluable tool for me who hosts drawing sessions and art classes here at my studio under my organization, Studio Slew. Squarespace's platform gives me the ability to host ticketed events super seamlessly throughout all their tools on their platform. It is so professional as a business owner to have a good and efficient website, whether you're in e commerce, if you're just having a portfolio for your artwork, or you're trying to have a brick and mortar business like me. Squarespace has unbelievable award winning templates as well as 24 hour customer service. They have the best user interface that make it so easy while maintaining its professionalism, the drag and drop grid method. It's so helpful to me. I, I have been just loving my Squarespace website. You have heard it before. It's an amazing asset to have as a business owner, as an artist. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to buy a domain and build a website, go to squarespace.com slash slew for 10% off. So Dave Batista has some great angles in this snapshot from Dune 2. You could also see though these horizontal plumb lines don't give much information. So it's our job as the visual archaeologists to choose plumb lines that actually give us information. The vertical ones are way better. You could obviously use horizontal ones some places. You could always squeeze it out, but you know, sometimes they don't always work and you have to meander and problem solve to find good reference to compare and measure. So I thought that was interesting. It's also crazy to see how big the forehead is in most people. You people usually have hair and it covers their forehead, but you know, the eyes really sit right at the middle of the total distance of the face. So I thought this was a good portrait to illuminate that. Super hard shading here. I was actually quite happy with sort of just the outline and finding the proportions. The shading is much harder. It's very challenging, but we're gonna stop there. I think you get the point. Dave Batista in the bag, super cool half mouth open shot. Um, let's do one more Harkonnen. So this is a crazy photo of this extremely obese man uh, from Dune to the the head Harkonnen man, I forgot his name. And I'm not putting up lines on this reference because I thought it'd be fun if you're still following along to sort of do it yourself and see what you can find. This is probably the weakest drawing of the other or the, of all the five, but I was going quite quickly here. Um, and also the shading with this face is extremely difficult. It's basically one mid-tone with some rim light. So this was just for fun and to kind of capture the small little eyes and big nose and small mouth on, mouth on this giant sort of bulging head. Um, pretty interesting, but another just fun practice. You know, there's a million different types of faces. Everyone's different. So any face is fun. Any face is a puzzle. And uh, this was no different. Another super hard face to shade. You know, the whole face is sort of in shadow. Actually, right now, I'm just noticing this. Um, it's funny, once sometimes I get out of the uh, zone of observing and measuring, you look back and you realize something was off. This jowl comes like way more straight down. That's another thing like they talk about in painting is stepping away from the artwork and standing back. It's very easy to get too close and miss some of these uh, things, visual visual cues or whatnot. But uh, yeah, this was just sort of like a fun ender, kind of wacky with the smoke here. I just saw Dune 2, uh, Dune 2. Uh, that's why I'm drawing all these characters. Um, so yeah, comment plumb line below if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, you know, screenshot these uh, pictures if you wanna draw them, draw along. I think I'm gonna make a few more videos about uh, shading because I love shading and it's so important. <clears throat> and a lot of times another strategy to, you know, find uh, proportions and to make faces look realistic is to understand shading. And I did it briefly with this stump uh, I didn't really talk about it, but we will hopefully make more videos about shading. And yeah, but again, the name of the game today was comparison, measuring, comparing, and using plumb lines to do both of those things, um, and ratios of the height, observation skills. It takes 
hundreds and hundreds of drawings of different people to really internalize those things. And again, there's many different techniques on how to achieve a realistic face, to find the proportions, to find a likeness with a model or photo reference. But hopefully this uh, helps some people out because this is how I do things and I think it's more accessible to understand. So see you in the next video.